Hi, I'm Tom Mihawk, and welcome to my personal finance course. This is the sixth chapter in this course. This one's called Credit and Borrowing, and it really brings up the whole question about debt. How do you feel about debt? Is it good? Is it bad? Now, there's an interesting difference between credit and debt. Credit is the ability to borrow. Debt is the result of borrowing, the sum total of borrowing. Um, and so this chapter is called Credit and Borrowing. It's about having access to being able to borrow, which is important. But the whole issue of how much debt is, is, uh, is good and whether we should have debt at all is one that's certainly worth discussing. This chapter is going to focus a little bit more on getting credit and borrowing. But we should still talk about debt. Should we avoid it? Is it worth having? And we'll cover some of that in this chapter. How can you fund a purchase? You can use your current income. You can take from your savings or your investments, or you can borrow. Really those three ways, the three ways you can buy something, where you can fund a purchase. But the implications are important to know. First of all, spending from income reduces the amount you can save and invest, and depleting your savings and investments reduces your future financial stability. It limits your ability to achieve your future goals. Any planning that you're trying to do, any budgeting, any goal setting you're trying to do from a financial standpoint is deterred or reduced or made uh, more volatile if you have to take from your savings and your investments to acquire things. And lastly, borrowing has to be repaid, usually with interest, meaning that the repayment costs more than the amount you borrowed because you're paying also interest to borrow funds. Now, from a spending standpoint, the best way is to spend less than you earn. Plan your spending as a manageable portion of your earnings or your worth. For example, people talk a lot about the 50-30-20 plan, right? 50% of your earnings should be spent on things you have to spend like mortgage, rent, car loan if you have one, um, you know, um, cable bills, heat, electricity, those sorts of things. 30% is for you to spend however you decide to do it. And 20% should be saved and invested for the future. That's just a rule of thumb. Doesn't mean it's right. It's just one, but it's a way of looking at spending in a manageable approach. And only borrow though when necessary for valuable purposes, important things, and understand the cost of borrowing and the importance given uh, that it is to give attention to repayment and repayment strategies. So here's an important point to make, which is there's good debt and there's bad debt. And you should devote perhaps your borrowing or your debt to valuable purposes, things that increase your net worth, things that are important for your professional progress, things that are important for your family, those kinds of things or at least have a, a bias for borrowing in those ways. Credit is an arrangement to obtain goods or services now and pay for them in the future. This is really important, right? What if you, know, you don't get paid until next week and you get a flat tire and you have to pay to have the tire replaced? Or what if your transmission in your car goes? Or what if you know, something breaks in your refrigerator and you have, to, you have to replace it now, but you can't pay for it in cash for a week? Credit gives you the ability to do that. Consumer credit is generally a means of use of credit for personal needs, such as credit cards, car loans, personal loans that don't usually include or doesn't usually include a home mortgage. That's often considered a long-term liability. Consumer credit is a major driver of the U.S. economy. Many, I'd say probably most people have a home mortgage, but many people have credit cards, car loans, school loans, and those sorts of things. Let's talk about the advantages of credit. The good things, the good advantages of credit. It makes possible the purchase of an unexpected, important, needed item when you don't have liquid funds, like for a car repair, um, replacing broken appliances, those kinds of things. It's a cushion for unexpected emergencies. Those things might be medical, for example, or a f some family need, for example. It allows you to finance valuable items, valuable items that are expensive, like a home, education, car, business, family activities, like wedding, vacation, 
health related things. And it evidences financial stability. Your ability to get credit evidences financial stability. It supports a stronger credit score. We're going to talk about credit scores later in this chapter. You don't want to live your life to have a, a high credit score, but having a high credit score is important when you're interviewed for jobs, when you apply for mortgages. In so many ways in your financial life, having a strong credit score is helpful. Now, some less good advantages of credit. Access to a typical 30-day free financing period, the 30-day free float. Don't use that just because it's available. Use it only if you need it. And less good, immediate purchase of possible things makes it makes immediate purchases possible. Don't just, you know, sort of uh, impulse purchase because you can. You get an early notice of sales. You have easier returns or better support for warranties. It's convenient, right? You have a better record of your purchases. You need a credit card. You need credit to rent a hotel, rent a car online shopping, and you can also get rebates and airline miles. These are the less good reasons, right? Don't do it just for the airline miles. Do it if you need the credit and the airline miles comes with your credit card or your credit. Some disadvantages of credit. Credit adds to the cost of the purchase, the financing cost. What you pay back is greater than what you borrowed to acquire an item or a service. It makes spending and impulse purchases too easy. Keeping up with the Joneses, too easy. What's keeping up with the Joneses, right? I mean, everyone knows what that means, but the more insidious or the quieter impact is when you, let's say you move to a neighborhood that has great schools, convenient to transportation, easy to get into the city, and you find that all your neighbors have nice cars. And at first it doesn't matter, but after a while you feel unusual that you too don't have an expensive car, right? That's keeping up with the Joneses, the kinds of things that you don't realize impact you in the beginning, but do over time. So credit makes that too easy. Debt may become overwhelming, causing serious long-term financial problems, damage to family relationships, delay or failure to achieve your financial goals. And combined with other personal setbacks like medical problems, loss of a job, business or professional reversals, could cause bankruptcy, severe negative personal, psychological or professional impacts. Now, maybe that's exaggerating, but it's possible. And the overuse of debt does that. Now, if we're looking, I also teach financial statement analysis to MBA students, grad students. And we we'll often look at companies and look at their debt and their equity, equity being like their net worth, the contributions of stockholders, shareholders, and debt being what the company borrows. And when you look at a company that has no debt, we often think the senior management is maybe lazy. They're not using leverage as best possible. We know that adding debt to a company returns its, uh, increases its return on equity, but adding debt, adding financial leverage that increases return on equity also increases risk. And this happens in personal balance sheets too. The more debt you have, the more risky your situation. If you're confronted with a medical issue or the loss of a job or a business or a professional reversal, if you could live life with no debt and not have to get credit, that'd be great. Uh, but that's not always possible in getting through an entire life. Some types of credit open-end or revolving credit. Use it and you pay it back. You're given a credit limit based on your based on your, your uh, lender's judgment of your credit worthiness. So you can use it up to that limit, pay it down, and use it. It continues to revolve, in other words. Credit cards are an example of open-end or revolving credit. Interest is charged if the bill is not paid in full before the end of the typical 30-day interest-free period. If you carry a balance, you continue to pay interest on the balance you carry. A line of credit. Interest is based on market rates. It often offers overdraft protection, meaning if you overdraw one of your accounts, you pay too many bills relative to your uh, assets in that account, it can accumulate up on your, on your line of credit, or the bank may pay for you and then cause you to pay back. It's usually collateralized by home equity, meaning you have um, 
home equity in excess of a mortgage if you have that and that excess home equity the uh, a bank may lend against and uh, use that to make the loan safer the line of credit safer but it's available without collateral too when i was young i had uh, someone recommend that i get a, an unsecured line of credit it was a small amount i think i had a five thousand dollar credit limit and i used it and paid it back used it and paid it back and that way I developed credit history and um, it was good experience for me. Closed end or non-revolving credit are loans for specific purposes to be paid back by a specified time like a car loan, a home mortgage, a loan for an appliance or an electronics. Home mortgages are collateralized by home equity making it available to more borrowers and less expensive than, than would otherwise be because the presence of the collateral. If there wasn't collateral present, most people's um, credit risk would be too high to be able to borrow the amount needed to buy a home. So with the presence of the home as collateral, the bank can take the home if the person doesn't pay. Now, it doesn't mean that the first month or first two months, it's you know more like six months or four months or something like that. And the bank doesn't want to own your home and resell it. The bank wants to have you have lend you money and have you pay it back and earn interest earn revenue from your borrowing. But the presence of the collateral lo helps to lower the cost of the mortgage and also enable it to be available for more people uh, because there's less credit risk with the collateral. And that's the end of this first segment in the credit and borrowing chapter. You can find me at tommihawk.com at my YouTube channel and also at resume optimization on LinkedIn, I'm sorry, on uh, Twitter and Instagram. You can find me personally on LinkedIn. And look for my book, Optimize Your Resume, now available at Amazon. Thank you and see you back for the second segment of the credit and borrowing chapter.